So for this very special edition of How the Hell Did This Go Number One, we're going to have a special game in honor of the late, great, no, oh, he's still alive, Pee Wee Herman, just his career is dead. <laughs> I don't know if his career, is his career dead? No, his career is not dead. I, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to cover up for my full paw, or as I <laughs> say, full packs. Uh, it's just, you're predicting the future. I'm going to try to. And this is, so Brad and I, we made a little bit of a bet. We're going to sort of honor, honor Pee Wee. The first time that Andrea mentions Weird Al or Amish Paradise, it's the magic word. Because ah! <laughs> we also have a side bet uh, on who's going to buy the first round when we finally meet up. It's probably going to be me because obviously you know Andrea better, but we'll just sort of like save that for now. But between, between then, all of you watching and listening, don't tell her we're doing this. Talk to you soon. Welcome everyone to the next episode of How the Hell Did This Go Number One? And sometimes we're not necessarily going a certain route when we're looking at how the hell. This is actually a pretty easy answer. And it's a song that Miss Andrea Tessman picked. Andrea, why did we pick Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio? And it's a great choice, by the way. It's a great song. Um, it is still weirdly relevant today. Um, and it is a bit of a weird story how it gets to number one that I think we'll address because it actually did its run at number one before it was ever released as a single. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that had to do with the movie. Uh, so usually whenever we start here, I always like try, if it's something that I remember from my youth, because I'm old as crap it is, Brad told me I'm reaching that age that I could be a Walmart greeter. And thanks for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, Pretty sure you two are the same age. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but we had established that I'm older, so he's always going to have that on. Oh, like six yeah. months? Well, six months that he still has. Yeah. So six <laughs> months later, I'll be vying for your job. There you go. <laughs> and I'll be shaking my stick. <laughs> Get off my lawn! When I was a kid, I knew what it was. <laughs> the, the, the greatest quote ever by The Simpsons, and it became true in my lifetime. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I okay. used to be with it. And then they changed what it was. Now everything is weird and scary. And it'll happen to you. <laughs> no worry, man. I'm you really are ever. the same person, and this is disturbing. <laughs> but the but, other great grandpa quote is, when I was your age, I wore an onion on my belt. Because that was, was the style, style at the time. At the time. <laughs> well, Julio may, may or may not have worn an onion. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Again, I'm the one bringing this back. Nice. But I remember this. Uh, so I would have been in my early 20s. I think this is a pretty damn kick-ass song. I was mostly into grunge and alt music back then. But I think I'm going to just tell a, a, a bit of a story, not much of one. But I remember the one girl I was dating at the time uh, thought, I remember we're out some bar in Hull. And then she wants to go dancing to this. And then this song comes up. And she says, nah, I don't want to dance to this. And she says, come on, it's so romantic. And I went, and I remember thinking, okay, well, I wanted to get some that night, but this song isn't fucking romantic. But anyway. <laughs> so this song, let's talk about gangster rap because yes. this is pretty much right at the beginning of gangster rap. There was yeah. Ice Cube. So Coolio kind of the you know, the the groups join and it's break apart constantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but original like Ice Cube, let's say. Because mm -hmm. I'm forgetting the names of the multiple different Ice, but the... Ice Cube, Arizona Twisted Tea, <laughs> Arnold Palmer. <laughs> um, so you go back to about what 88, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the the real beginning of gangster rap, but they don't call it gangster rap. They they're talking about it's life rap, like we're rapping about our lives, and it was gangsters rapping about shooting gangsta shit. gangsta shit nowadays it's rappers pretending to be gangsters and that's a totally different thing but in some so case you, we had that then too so you've got this this type of rap that is very very brutal it's it's got explicit lyrics it's got all of the things the kids want to listen to. 
Um, Two live crew, baby. But it doesn't quite. <laughs> Two live it, crew. You've. <laughs> There's been uh, there's been some rap that had made it to radio play at this point and made it to the billboard charts. We've talked about some of them. We've talked about how much we like big butts and we've talked about um, we talked about vanilla ice ice baby. Um, what should we haven't? Have we not talked about vanilla ice? No, well, we've mentioned them. I'm sure. Oh, we haven't picked well, that'll be that'll be a future one for sure. Yeah. Anyways, Marky Mark. Yeah. These party rap white boy dweebs that think they're cool. But this, this song is kind of a really interesting middle ground. Coolio was doing some party rap shit. He was kind of a bit of a goof. Um, yeah, and that was actually my first introduction to him was actually not this song, but it was Fantastic Voyage. And I remember oh, that. I, yeah. Yeah. Ever since we picked this song, I've been running that one through my right. head. And like, that wasn't his first hit. Ride, I don't know. Yeah, but it was his first top 10. Rad, rad, slippity slad. Yeah. And, you know, you look at the guy and he did come from Compton. He did have, uh, he was arrested for larceny. He wasn't a gang singer, although he was... He'd spent a few years in his youth riding with the gangbangers. Right, and... But he never was he never was sort of Crips for life. Was he Crips or Bloods? I think Crips. I think he was the junior Crips or whatever they call it. I don't know. I'm but he got out. He, he got, and he... then he did a couple of years in prison. He worked as a security guard or something like. Yeah, I worked at LAX, I think as a baggage handler or something. I don't know. But, you know, he had regular jobs. But, you know, he never gave up on the rap dream. But the guy is i mean apparently his first rap name i love this coolio iglesias that's awesome uh, yep. uh, 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 after julio all the girls i've loved before <laughs> i feel like we've done this yeah we, we have, have not okay no we, we haven't done done. done the song but yeah we, we've done our impressions <laughs> i'm sure what you, I was you two have yes. for. making sure you had that opportunity kirk yes i appreciate that so i mean but so he's got just the right credibility. And I was listening to his, his first couple full albums. So he's got a mix of the party vibe and well, I'm from Compton, you know, cause he, he does back and forth that, but his first big hits were of that party genre, putting it bluntly. And he doesn't necessarily look like, well, the way Ice Cube looks, like if you look at him sideways, he's gonna kill you, which hasn't changed much in 30 years. He yeah. still looks like he could kill you. But, but I'll say this on Fridays, there's no way you're beating up tiny listener. It ain't happening. It would have kicked your ass. But okay, but moving on. Sorry, I just had, I just had, to, had to bring that up. So going back to this song, or do you guys still want to hit the history of it? Yeah, I, I want Well, yeah, yeah history. We, um, it's basically, it's a straight up Stevie Wonder sample mm -hmm. of Pastime Paradise, which is talking about people wasting their life reminiscing about the past basically mm -hmm. but it's it's the same song um but coolio never tried to pretend it wasn't and went to stevie wonder to get permission to use it um it took a while it took a while and apparently stevie wonder asked for 95 percent oh i missed that yeah, and i don't I, think that's what they eventually agreed on but stephen also demanded that he take all profanity out of it, yeah, which is that. why you now got this. He did him a favor because you've got a very mid range radio playable song. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of passion and feeling and catchy, catchy lyrics. Like, and, uh, and a bit of that member berry thing. That sounds yep. like something I've heard before, but you can't quite place it because that's a Stevie Wonder deep cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It oh, was wow. never released as a single for right. Stevie Wonder. Right. But that was on one of his monster albums, Song in the Keys of Life. Yeah. Songs in the Keys of Life. If, if you haven't listened to that album, I encourage everyone to do so. So you've got that aspect of it. You've got also that pairing with LV, uh, who I, I didn't really bother learning much about him, but yeah. he's pretty much there as like doing the, the, the vocal bits. Um, LV stands for large variety. Yeah, but his real name was Larry Sanders. 
which is hysterical to me. Yes. <laughs> this is the theme to Gary's show, the theme to Gary yeah. Shandling's show. <laughs> I, guess, I guess you're going to change your name for sure on, on that. <laughs> Although for me, I always love it how, how big time rappers always do this. They always come up with their new name and then by their third or fourth album, it's their actual real name. Marshall Mathers, uh, the Marshall Al Ma Mathers album. Uh, I'm some shitty, so I'm the real shady. For Sean Carter. You know, it's well, always with, with 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 Marshall Mathers versus Eminem. That was always seen as two different personas. Oh, but I mean, they, they always use they always sort of like go back like, well, this is my real name, like oh, whatever. But anyway, I'm 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 going across. Coolio never made the stage where he gave his real name, and I forgot what it was, but it was very, uh, well, what very. I can't remember artist, what it was either. Artist Leon Ivy Jr. Thank you. Correct. Yes, yeah. that's right. I still like Coolio Iglesias. Oh, isn't that awesome? <laughs> so, so you've got that. Now you've got a, I was reading something where somebody sort of uh, came up with the same conclusion that I did. I'll, I'll just, I never wrote about it. When I was looking back at this, when you, when you picked it, I was thinking that we've got in our, in our hands, one of the first really true crossover, almost pop-like songs without realizing that it is. I mean, you've had that before uh, with Will Smith, uh, you know, when it was the Fresh Prince and whatnot, L Cool Jiggy J, uh, yeah, you'll get jiggy with what's after. But I mean, like back then, it was like parents don't, parents just don't understand. Yeah, so, I love that song as a teenager. Yeah. Sure, uh, it because it, it hits that that right button. So, it's all about teenagers, yeah. But here you've got something that's lush. It's pop friendly. It's rap. But yes, you're talking about some really. How do I put this? Well, it's good for a couple of listens because you can go through and you can listen to it and you can understand it. You listen to it again, you understand it a little deeper. Um, and well, yeah. it's lyrically, it's lyrically deep. And it's not a it's, sell. It's also, it's just full of, I mean, he's just lamenting the gangster life in a very deep, um, but not bs kind of way he's not mm. glorifying it and yeah. it's full of catchy hooks yeah like i swear we could all recite this word for word almost. when it came yeah. uh, i don't know if the three of us want to go up to karaoke and do this but <laughs> <laughs> no we might get our asses handed to us but it. like it's just like that minute after minute hour after hour money after money power after power so i've, I've been working on a new impression Oh, okay. All right, so here we go. All right, so from the video, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh no, oh no. You just look like a grumpy old German dude. It's, I don't get Michelle Pfeiffer, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't picking up way Michelle hotter than you. Not anymore. Uh, yeah, I'd still bang her before you. <laughs> or shave again, we, maybe we still have a chance. Um, yeah, this was sort of like the tail end of her hotness uh, or her peak hotness, let's just say. Her peak. I don't know. She's pretty peak hot in this movie. That's what I said. Peak. What's her, what's her thing peak after this? None. Michelle Pfeiffer is Catwoman. That was before. Mm -hmm. was that no, before? that was after. I'm pretty sure that was after. Oh, was she did before. Dangerous Minds first and then, and then Batman. Pretty sure Batman was after. Yeah. All right. One of you Michelle looked Pfeiffer up, is Catwoman. Sure right on this one. That did things to me. I would say, yeah, Catwoman, Catwoman Michelle Pfeiffer is peak hotness. All right. Either either way, we're certain. I think we're certain inch before the best before date, in my opinion. Saying that, did anyone? I didn't watch the movie when this came out then because I oh, thought I did. There's no point because I've seen this shit before. Uh, you know, rich teacher comes in and then straightens out all the kids after a bunch of uh, issues. And so I said to myself, okay, I'm going to watch this finally. And then I tried to. And then 20 minutes later, it's like, nope, seen this. Mm. No way. I watched it. I liked it. It was all right. Yeah, but it, it, it's it's the same trope. Apparently, it's based on a real story. Yeah, it was it was no uh, Dead Poets Society. No, I, I suppose it wasn't. H having said that, I looked up who the real person was that it was based on. Did not look like Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> no. This was when Michelle Pfeiffer tried to make herself look uh, not like Michelle Pfeiffer and couldn't do it. <laughs> so my internet connection crapped out for like two minutes there. What, what is 
What movie? Are we talking about Dangerous Minds or have you moved yes. on to something yeah, else? Yeah, we were talking about Dangerous, Dangerous Minds. Minds. Yes. It also is all 90s schlock. Like, mm-hmm. it's not a great movie, um, but the song made everybody want to watch it. Oh, without a doubt. And, you know, this this song carried on long after the movie, too. Like, what did it do? 14 weeks at number one? Three. Three hit. Three weeks at number one on Billboard. Not that but, long. But it, it was the number one song of the year. Mm. Yes. Okay. And he did a lot of weeks on the on the charts. It just was three weeks at number one. Not that I put a whole lot into this, but it did win like the best rap out rap single solo. Uh, I generally don't give a shit about Grammys and whatnot, but you know, for those that do, it did win. Yeah, I was. Uh, I mean, this was the closest. Like this one at Will Smith and the Beastie Boys were in my lane as uh you know a suburban white teenager um, these now, boys had their own niche because they were like punk rap and very very angsty white boy um mm. but fun angsty white boy yeah but they also so, took it to took rap to a different place where it seemed a lot more doable for other people yeah, like, like they weren't trying to talk about the ghetto because they weren't from there. They yeah. From whereas, you had, whereas you had Vanilla Ice who tried to t- try to make up this fake backstory <laughs> when, he was, when he wasn't. No. Yeah. And like that's what everyone hates more than anything else is, and it doesn't matter what you are and whatever what line of work is a fake. Mm. So going back to what you guys were saying before with uh, Stevie kind of trying to take the wheel uh, on this song a little bit. And I can't blame him because, I mean, this is this is his song. It's the backbone of the song, you know, when he when they go to oh, make this. He didn't want to take so, the wheel. He just wanted 95% of the monetary. Um, but he, didn't, he didn't get that, though, did he? No, I don't think so. I don't know what he actually got. I just saw when they settled. But on top of that, like you guys, like you were saying before, Andrea, where he was insisting that there be no cursing or anything like that. I think that really led to how radio friendly this was. And you can't ask how the hell did this go number one because it it, it had all the earmarks of a number one song. It, it's catchy. It's got lots of good hooks. Mm-hmm. It's got uh, that whole Memba Berries thing where, you know, this sounds like something I've heard before because it's little Stevie Wonder. Um, and it's 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 completely radio friendly, so you can you can wind up reaching a wider audience than you could with Cop Killer. Well, that's exactly it. It um, I think that it definitely did Coolio a favor to take any expletives out of it um, because it made it instantly radio friendly, but it still didn't take away from the the. Um, still had a punch. Yeah, the the truthfulness of the lyrics and the feeling of the lyrics. And then, as you said, it's it's probably one of the first rap pop crossovers that kind of set the way for a bit of a different genre. I I was trying to to find before, because I was looking at the history of gangster rap and just rap in general. Uh, I don't know how many, what was the first song to do it? I mean, I, you could argue that it was actually Blondie with rap with Rapture, but uh, you know, there, you'd have your rap song and then you always have your verse uh, sung. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now almost every song is that same thing or the opposite where the bridge is a rap, which is so- Oh rap- yeah, there's a ton of that, but that's not the gangster rap. The gangster rap was really that like, Sure. anti-establishment shooting everybody live in the street life and just glorifying gangs right but that's why i call this more of a, a bit of a, a pop rap gateway yeah place. Mm-hmm. so it's a rap, good bridge yeah because now the the imitators to this holy crap i mean you could drop this song right now and you'd never know if you never heard it before mm-hmm. oh it, for sure that's what I was saying before. It's still relevant. You know, the 
people being brought up in the streets are still being brought up in the streets and still have the same disadvantages and the same. Yeah. The, the whole thing he's saying in this song is like, it's not my fault where I am. This is my life. It's because I was brought up in this life. So and then, I think that still is exactly true. So then we look at what happened to him after. And the reality is not a whole hell of a lot. Uh, Coolio did have a few other hits after this. Nothing even remotely close. Uh, had a couple more albums and he's pretty much been nostalgic ever since. Hey, in 2013, he was in Wife Swap. Was he? <laughs> Who did he swap with? Uh, hang on here. Oh, 2009. Uh, he appeared as a housemate on Celebrity Big Brother. Oh, geez. Um, 2013, uh, he did Wife Swap, but his then-girlfriend left him after the program was taped. <laughs> oh! Uh, apparently, she, I guess she found out she could do better. Um, and let's see here. What was... Yeah, Celebrity Big Brother, he left after... Um, numerous confrontations with Nadia Almada and others. Ah. In the house. Who the hell is Nadia Almada? A Portuguese born British television personality. Nobody I've ever heard of before. No, nope. so this is Celebrity Big Brother or like yeah. Celebrity so, Big Brother somewhere else. He, he's been in several things, just nothing gigantically notable. Coolio now looks like he ate Coolio. Oh, did he get big? Oh, yes. He, he's a little large, and I guess he's balding quite a bit because he's only got two little puffs. <laughs> Take a look at what he looks like now. Those it, were antenna. That They, they kind of look more like an antenna now. It, it's, uh, yeah, it's not necessarily a good look for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well. I think we've probably said most of what we can say about this song. Have we, though? <laughs> yeah, have we? It's a great song. It's we, we still relevant. On... I was, like, rocking out to it, listening to it multiple times this week. Just this version? What other version? I had no Muppets version. I'm sorry. All right. Well, I Andrea, watched it. I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Okay. Well, I can only find the Muppets versions when there's a Muppets version. No, and for no, those of you no. who don't know, yeah. every week I send these guys the Muppets version of the song we do because there's almost always one. Kirk and I had a side bet going on this entire episode. Mm -hmm. I Kirk lost. bet that it, you wouldn't make it five minutes. I said seven and a half mm -hmm. before you brought up Amish Paradise. Oh, Weird Al. I, I've been, I've been low like dropping the ball on the Weird Al references. So maybe I'll have to up those with the Muppets and yeah, then we'll yeah. go from there. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to illuminate the, the special introduction that Brad and Nobody I wins this one. No, keep keep it in there. Keep All it right. in there, absolutely. Keep the introduction. Oh, you did a separate introduction that didn't involve me while I was having technical difficulties? Yes. Mm -hmm. You are both assholes. <laughs> we just figured that one you were for each get, of you. You were gonna oh, get well, the we, Weird we Al thing for sure. There. This is what part of the reason you picked it. No, I do enjoy me some Weird Al, but I was not bringing up Amish Paradise. If I was, I would have, I would have sent it to you. We read in our group do, uh, like a, She said the word. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. <sighs> well, maybe whatever. I don't even know who's picking next for next week, but maybe whatever you guys decide, I'll, I'll um find something well you won't for the one that i've picked all right what do we got are you sure yeah we're gonna do the escape club wild wild west okay not will smith wild wild west not the wild wild west no no that's we're kumo do, d no we're, we're we're gonna do the escape club wild i wild don't west. know this oh yes yeah, you well, do you didn't miss much you know you'll you'll hear it you'll know it right away i forgot oh, that no. one oh no yeah, that's that's not too good. Uh, oh well. Oh no. <laughs> all all of a sudden, the, Google's going to be confused why three people are doing Google searches on the Escape Club at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Although, hey, no, the Rise Up was a gay anthem, still is, and it's it's a great song. What is? Oh, that what? was the Parachute Club, different club. Yeah, different club. Rise Up is a great song. Yeah, that's a gay. That that's a gay anthem. Club. Rise mm-hmm. up, rise up. Yeah, that one is. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, well, now you know. All it's right, been well, that way since like almost the day I, before it came out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much forever. Mm-hmm. Well, I did not know that. No, but this one is living, no, heading for the 90s, living in the wild, wild west. This would be a song that would be on the Pretty Woman soundtrack if, if this didn't predate Pretty Woman. It's like Pretty Woman music. Am I kind of right on that? Uh, yeah. Not really, I don't think, but Google no. it, have a listen, wonder where the Escape Club ever went. They escaped. <laughs> Escape. <laughs> hey, hey, Kirk. Yeah, I heard you wrote a book. I wrote we a did book. not write a book. I wrote a book. It's a, it's one hell. Of you a wrote book. a book. I wrote a book. Is it about um a boxer? Is it about Chavo Guerra Senior? Yes, it is. Chavo Guerra. How did you know? Oh, yes, it's Chavo about Guerra. a wrestler. Yeah, it's a pro wrestler. There it is. Yes, Tra- Chavo Guerrero Senior. Instant classic. Check that out on Amazon. Uh, Andrew's supposed to be a special guest on another show. Eventually, we got to figure out when we're doing that because we're looking at. The companion show to this, this crap was on national television. And we're going to look at the 1989 Oscars. So hopefully we'll be able to do that at some point, t- some point anytime soon. The regular Hall of Fame show where Evan Nolan and I look at just regular Hall of Fame related things are on. And then there's I do that and so much more. Recently, recently, uh, now this is all up on the YouTube page. I had the pleasure of, of interviewing the three people who were part of the induct Cindy Lauper into the Hall of Fame cam- uh, campaign. That was a lot of fun. So three great people. Check that out. That's also available on the site. I also talked to somebody who thinks that Jim McCormick, that's, uh, you know, I think that's Brad's favorite baseball player from the 1880s. And it why was be- actually my favorite. Yeah. I have posters of him all around my room. Yes. It's from the 1880s. You can see his skull behind you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually the current picture of Jim McCormick. <laughs> And why he should be in the baseball hall of fame. It's actually a really good show. So if you're a baseball fan, love old time baseball, check that out. All that so much more, wherever you are, wherever you may be. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. See ya.